Everyone keeps saying Bitcoin is a bubble about to burst, but what if I told you this bubble is actually unburstable? Look, I get it. You're probably wondering three things. First, how can any bubble be unburstable? Second, what makes Bitcoin different from every other bubble in history? And third, is there actual mathematical proof that shows this? This research cost me months of my life and drove my wife Barmy because I was becoming obsessed with proving Bitcoin was a scam. Instead, I was humbled about what could be the biggest financial revolution of our lifetime. I discovered five pieces of mathematical evidence that don't just prove Bitcoin isn't a bubble, they prove it's something that's never existed before in financial history. Look, I'll be honest, I was a Bitcoin skeptic. I called it digital tulips to friends in 2018. That quote aged like milk in the sun. But this research completely changed my mind. And here's why. I always thought Bitcoin looks exactly like every bubble in history. The crazy price spikes, the crashes, the hype cycles. Then I learned what bubbles actually are mathematically. Real bubbles follow a specific pattern. They inflate with speculation, then they pop when reality hits. Think tulip mania in the 1600s, companies during the dot-com crash in 2001, or the housing bubble in 2008. Here's where it gets interesting. I spent way too long studying every major bubble in history, made charts, drew graphs, analyzed the mathematical patterns based on historical data. Every traditional bubble had almost identical math. Price disconnects from value, speculation takes over, and then, that was good. Bitcoin follows the same bubble math, but repeats it on a schedule. Think of bubbles like balloons filled with hot air. They expand fast, then burst completely, nothing left. Bitcoin is more like a tree growing. Fast growth spurts in spring, slower periods in the winter, but the root system keeps expanding underground. Trees don't just vanish, they build stronger foundations during every cycle. Some people have different theories as to why these repeated schedules have happened, such as the halving cycle every four years for Bitcoin. But it also coincides with the liquidity cycle or the business cycle, which has happened every four years since 2008. It's too much to go into in this video alone, but I will link you a good video about cycles below if you wanna know a bit more. The first mathematical proof Bitcoin isn't a bubble. It turns bubble patterns into a recurring feature, not a one-time death. This alone changed my perspective, but wait until you see this pattern that made me question everything I thought I knew about Bitcoin. Now, I know what you're thinking. Sure, Bitcoin doesn't follow bubble math, but those crashes are still devastating. I believed Bitcoin crashes would get worse over time. Bigger bubbles mean bigger pops, right? More volatility, more destruction. That's how bubbles work. But when I mapped out Bitcoin's crash percentages over each cycle, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Each crash was actually smaller than the last one. 2013 crashed 85% from peak to bottom. 2017, 83%, 2021, 77%. But this is the part that blew my mind. Bitcoin's 2018 bottom of $3,200 was 180% higher than its entire 2013 peak of $1,150. The 2022 crash bottom at 15 grand was still within range of most of 2017's bull run. But Bitcoin isn't just getting less volatile the mathematical foundation keeps strengthening, like a wild horse slowly being tamed, but also growing stronger. I double checked my math multiple times because I thought I made a mistake. But according to Glassnode data, this pattern is clear. Bitcoin's volatility is decreasing as adoption grows. This is the opposite of bubble behavior. Bubbles get more unstable as they grow. Bitcoin is becoming more stable. So mathematical proof number two, each crash is smaller than the last and each bottom is around levels of the previous peak. And here's the kicker. In Bitcoin's 16 year history, you've never been underwater for more than three years, even if you bought at the worst possible time. Bought in a 2013 peak, you recovered in just over three years. Bought in the 2017 peak, you recovered in three years. The 2021 peak, you recovered in two years, four months. Bitcoin has always come back every single time. And the recovery is getting faster. Whereas traditional bubble investors have lost everything forever. But wait until you see this next number. It's the one that convinced me I'd been completely wrong. When I dug deeper into where Bitcoin's money actually comes from, 
I found something that completely shattered my assumptions. Your financial advisor will hate this next chart because it proves everything they've told you about Bitcoin volatility is mathematically wrong. I literally stared at this chart for 10 minutes thinking I'd made a mistake. I always assumed Bitcoin was just people trading fake money back and forth, paper gains, digital gambling. Then I discovered something called realized cap from Glassnode research. Here's the difference that blew my mind. Market cap just multiplies today's Bitcoin price by how many Bitcoin exist. So if Bitcoin is $100,000 and there are 20 million Bitcoin, market cap says the whole thing is worth 2 trillion. But realized cap asks a much different question. How much real cash did people actually spend to buy all of this Bitcoin? It looks at every Bitcoin and says, when this specific Bitcoin last changed hands, what did someone pay for it? Then it adds up all those actual purchase prices and works it out. Think of it like this. If you bought a house for £200,000, but it's worth £500,000 today, how much real money did you actually spend? 200K, not 500K. That's what realized cap measures for Bitcoin. This reveals something incredible. During Bitcoin's worst crash in 2022, while the price was falling 77% from 68,000 to 17,000, realized cap declined only 19% from 24,000 to 19,000. Think about what this means. The price collapsed, but the amount of real cash invested barely dropped. People weren't panic selling. They were buying the dip with real money. Bitcoin's price is set by whoever's actually trading. It's like a neighborhood where 95% of homeowners aren't selling, but the few houses that do sell go for 50% less. Suddenly all houses are worth 50% less on paper. But here's the thing, Bitcoin is like a store having a massive sale and people lining up to buy more stuff. That's not how bubbles work. In real bubbles, everyone runs away. Turns out those financial institutions telling you Bitcoin is risky speculation were quietly accumulating it behind closed doors. Jamie Dimon says Bitcoin is a fraud. He says he'll fire any one of his traders buying Bitcoin. Bitcoin drops 24%. So that weekend, we found out that the largest buyer was Morgan Stanley and JP Morgan. And that's not illegal. The third piece of evidence, real money keeps flowing into Bitcoin during crashes. Before you dismiss this, let me show you the actual numbers that convinced me this isn't speculation. Here's a stat that broke my brain. More computing power secures the Bitcoin network than Google, Amazon, Microsoft, and Apple combined. Plus it uses more energy than many countries. During the crash, this security increased. Before you think this is wasteful, just as I showed you in video seven, over 50% of Bitcoin now runs on excess renewable energy and captures methane emissions, which is actually helping the environment. Let me show you why these numbers matter. Hash rate is basically like network security. Think of hash rate as the total computing power protecting Bitcoin. More hash rate means more miners investing real money, electricity, equipment, etc., to secure the network. It's like measuring how many guards are protecting Fort Knox during a bank run. If it were just speculation, the guards would just go home when things got scary. Here's the shocking part. During every brutal bear market when Bitcoin prices crashed, hash rate didn't collapse. Instead, it grew dramatically. In 2013, hash rate exploded 6,500% from five terahashes to 330. The 2017 bear market, hash rate surged 186% from 14 exahashes to 40 exahashes. During the 2021 brutal crash, hash rate climbed another 67%, from 150 exahashes to 250 exahashes. Why does this matter? If Bitcoin were just speculation, miners would have unplugged their machines when prices crashed 80%. Instead, during the worst market conditions, they doubled down, investing billions more in equipment and electricity costs. But this isn't all. Active addresses measures how many unique wallets are actually transacting each day. Real people moving real Bitcoin for real purposes. During the 2013 bubble popping, active addresses increased from 150 to 310K, up 107%. When the 2017 crash happened, active addresses did drop, but down 55%, not 83%. The 2021 crash, active addresses dropped 42%, not 77%, from 1.25 million to 720,000. So there were still 720,000 active addresses using Bitcoin every day during the worst crash. Why does this matter? 
In every bubble I've studied, usage doesn't just decline, it goes to zero when the bubble bursts. Companies disappear, assets become worthless, and nobody uses them anymore. But here's what gets even more crazy and makes Bitcoin so different. No other asset class even has this kind of transparent usage data. You can't see real-time active users for gold, stocks, or real estate. Bitcoin's blockchain gives us unheard of visibility into actual utility. We're not just blindly guessing. And what we see is remarkable. High commitment during bad times doesn't equal speculation. It equals genuine value creation, as you can see in the video about real use cases for Bitcoin. So the fourth mathematical proof, network security and utility grow during market fear. This led me to realize why Bitcoin behaves so differently from every bubble in history. We need to compare Bitcoin to the right things. Bitcoin isn't a device like a smartphone, and it's not technology like Apple and Microsoft. Bitcoin is a protocol like the internet, electricity, or the telephone itself. The telephone protocol took around 65 years to reach 50% adoption. Electricity took about 55 years. The internet took 33 years. Every protocol follows this S curve. As Jeff Booth, author of The Price of Tomorrow, explains, Bitcoin isn't within the system, it's outside the system bounded by energy. It is repricing that entire system over time. Technologies are winner take most, protocols are winner take all. Open protocols win. The last protocol anybody knows uh, about would be the internet. According to the data from 18 months ago, we're at 6.8% global adoption for crypto. So 562 million people more than the entire population of North America now own crypto. But when we look at USA adoption specifically, to compare apples to apples, crypto was at about 15% adoption. So it's likely around 20% today. Historically, once protocols hit 25 to 30%, the acceleration becomes unstoppable. But here's what's really crazy. According to BlackRock Research, crypto adoption beats mobile phones by 43% and the internet by 20% at comparable stages. The internet hit mainstream adoption around 2002. We're currently where the internet was in 1993, and Bitcoin is growing faster than that. Do the math. That means we're less than nine years away from mainstream adoption, and the growth is accelerating. Crypto ownership jumps 33% in 2023, with a compound annual growth rate of 99% since 2018. It far exceeds traditional payment methods, which on average grew by 8% growth during that time period. Cryptocurrency ownership growth surpassed payment giants like American Express and PayPal. That's not a bubble pattern. That's how genuine protocol innovations spread through society. Hey, Future Mike here. Just wanted to say, note that this is crypto adoption, not Bitcoin only. There's still so few people that really understand what Bitcoin is. So even with this data, I think it just shows how incredibly early we actually are. Now, I can almost hear you thinking, what if this time is different though? What if Bitcoin fails like MySpace or BlackBerry? Remember, here's the key distinction. MySpace and BlackBerry were devices and applications. Bitcoin is a protocol, like the internet itself or electricity infrastructure. Think of it this way. The internet is the protocol. It's the foundation that everything else builds on. But Internet Explorer, Facebook, and even Google are just technologies that use the internet. The internet itself never goes away, but the companies and apps built on top of it can fail. Bitcoin is like the internet. It's the foundational money protocol. Everything else is just built on top of it. Real bubbles don't follow S-curves. They spike and then disappear forever. Tulip mania, pets.com, Bear Stearns. They all collapsed and never recovered because they had no real utility driving adoption. Bitcoin keeps recovering to new highs because it's following the adoption curve of a revolutionary protocol, not the collapse pattern of a speculative bubble. So the fifth mathematical proof, it follows the S-curve of tech adoption. And if this S-curve is right, like all previous ones, we have maybe five to 10 years before Bitcoin hits 50% adoption in developed countries. And after that, the easy gains are over, not financial advice. So what does all this mean? When I started this research years ago, I honestly was trying to prove Bitcoin was a bubble. The evidence overwhelmingly convinced me of the opposite. Bitcoin doesn't follow bubble math crashes are getting smaller over time. Real money keeps flowing in during downturns. Network usage and security grow with adoption. And we're still in the early stages of the steepest part of the S-curve. 
The math doesn't lie. Bitcoin isn't a bubble. It's the adoption curve of a new monetary system. If you see something different or can show me something I'm missing, I'd love to see it in the comments. But all of this means nothing if you're still thinking, okay, I'm convinced Bitcoin isn't a bubble, but that doesn't mean it's guaranteed to succeed, right? You're absolutely right. So I made a list of every single way Bitcoin could fail. Government bans, technical flaws, energy concerns, scalability issues, everything. What I found surprised even me. Most of the Bitcoin will fail arguments are based on outdated information, but a few, they're actually serious concerns every Bitcoin investor should understand. So watch this video next to see which threats are real versus which ones are just noise. Because even the strongest mathematical case means nothing if you don't understand the risks.